Throughout the history of the PBA, only a few reinforcements were able to become a part of a Grand Slam team. There's Cyrus Mann in 1976 and Billy Ray Bates and Larry Demick in 1983. All of them were imports of the fabled CRISPR and Manisons. Other imports who became a part of this elusive company include Phoenix Watley of San Miguel Beer in 1989, Sean Chambers of Alaska in 1996, and Marcus Blakely of the old Field Foods franchise, then carrying San Miguel Coffee in 2014. Let's take a look back at how some of these imports relished the opportunity of winning the Grand Slam. Uh, San Miguel Beer, uh, when you first heard of that team, what came to your mind, Ines? Well, first of all, when, when I heard it, I think they had Keith Smart at the time when they was uh, going for the Grand Slam. And, uh, uh, I heard of Norman Black because uh, Norman is actually, I'm, I'm from I'm, I'm from Birmingham, but I've been here in Maryland for 32 years. And uh, they, they were saying that uh, they had this black coach that was coaching in the Philippines. Okay. And that, you know, he was looking for a, a certain type of player and everything. So that's why I had heard uh, early. So that, that, that interested me. Uh, and I came over, you know, I, you know, and I'm meeting Norman Black and everything. We hit it off right away and everything. He kind of told me what he wanted to do. But San Miguel Beer was, uh, you know, I didn't realize how big San Miguel uh, Beer was until I got there. Man, it's crazy. Ain't nothing like it, you know. <laughs> okay. Uh, among your teammates with San Miguel, who were the ones who popped your fancy? Oh my God, uh, man! Uh, I had so many uh, uh, good teams. Ricardo Brown, uh, you know, was we, we we was always close, along with you know Norman Black. He actually played with us at the time, you know, as mm -hmm. a coach player. But Hector Palmer, uh, Digna DC, uh, Sam Boylan, uh, man, Alvin Tang. I, it, it, it's so many. It's so many. I had so many great uh, teammates, mm -hmm. and it was such a great situation uh, for me to come into. I always been a playmaker all my life, but it was just a perfect fit uh, to come play with Sam Miguel Beer. You know, at that time, yes. Okay, uh, two of those teammates of yours, Sam Boylan and uh, Hector Calma, they're already part of, uh, of the PBA Hall of Fame. If we're going to include Coach mm -hmm. Norman Black, that would be the third. Uh, uh, within the team of San Miguel Beer, right? Can you list Coach Norman Black as among those all-time greatest coaches of yours? And what makes him as such a great coach? Well, first of all, like I said, not just because I'm black, but that's the part about, you know, really drew me to him. But I think when I met him, it was deeper than just the color of his skin. Uh -huh. uh, I think that uh, him being from Baltimore and then just his... his uh, his, his uh, relationship skills and, and just he made he made me so comfortable. You know, well deserved uh, uh, guy uh, came out front was very business like. Told me that uh, he needed me to score. Now, can you believe I'm, I'm a I, I scored early in my career, but I, I became a playmaker playing in Chicago. So he told me he said, "Enos, listen to me." He said, "You got the least score if you can give me 48 a game. You know that would be a whole lot." I said, "No." You say 48 a game. I say, are you serious? I said, man, I never shot that much a day in my life. But we kind of joke and laugh. About it. But very, very, very professional guy, man. And, uh, a good friend at the time. Really, really helped me out a lot. And, um, you know, um, well deserved. He's going to do the Hall of Fame. I think he's one guy that, that have a, adjusted and, 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 and longevity have, have lasted for a long time. Right, okay. I, I forgot to mention Ricardo Brown is also with, in the Hall of Fame, PBA Hall of Fame. But I, I've yeah. got a message from Coach Norman Black. He sent me a text message a while ago. And uh, he said that uh, he was one of the most efficient imports I've ever coached in the PBA. He shot over 60% from the field and was an excellent free throw shooter and rarely made turnovers. In addition, he had a great attitude and got along with his teammates immediately. He was exactly what the doctor ordered and what we needed to complete the Grand Slam. That's from Norman Black at Elis. Sending his yeah, I, as well. I, I, I appreciate it. That, that's likewise. You know, my, the, the feeling is mutual. He, he really did uh, 
make me feel comfortable. He told me from the front what he was looking for. And I just think my personality along with just say Hector Calm or Sam Boy Man, you know, Digna DC, all the guys, uh, I didn't really have to be anything special. I just had to be, you know, they gave me a nickname called a silent operator. And I, and, and I just, you know, like you said, with the efficiency, I've always been very efficient, but it, I never went to a place that fits so well, which was San Miguel being. We, we, we really had a, a great team, but everyone knew how to play that. And it, it was easy playing at San Miguel. For imports like Watley, Chambers, and Blakely, being a part of this illustrious Grand Slam etched their mark in PBA history. Join us again next time in another episode of the Grand Slam edition featuring the coaches here at the Link Podcast, now on Rice Sports Network. On behalf of our director, Alvin Alejo, this is your host, Bray Hoble. So long, everybody! Wait,